start understanding the pathogenesis of covid so that it will be very easy the macrophage will start killing the cells by contact killing ACE2 receptor is expressed on the surface of lymphocytes. Only cell increased in COVID is neutrophils. Neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, NLR. Antibodies which are formed in COVID not only attack the co uh, as protein of coronavirus, also they attack a minor subset of platelets. How to identify when a patient will be progressing into cytokine storm? The best inflammatory marker, which is the CRP. Much. Don't just rely on lab values alone. It has high negative predictive value, patient DAC. How to differentiate whether it's due to COVID or whether it's due to some sepsis going on in COVID? Globin which will bind the free iron and prevent its circle. Never ever give iron tablets when a patient is having active infection or only interleukin 6 elevated. Remaining all the other markers are exactly normal. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. R. Karthik again doing MD medicine at MAMC. So as we were seeing a series of lectures on the new variants of COVID, use of steroids in COVID and CT scan when to do and how to interpret in COVID. The next important aspect in clinical management is how are you going to approach with the blood tests in COVID? Okay, when to take these tests actually? And what does each of these tests signify? All these we are going to see today in our animation video. Let's start understanding the pathogenesis of COVID so that it will be very easy to you to decode what and all is happening with respect to each investigation. Okay, so the first is, see the COVID virus, once it enters the body, it is phagocytosed and it is processed by this antigen presenting cell. It presents the antigen to the T helper cell. This T helper cells will next communicate with a CD4 positive cell, which is a T helper 2 cells, will activate the arms of humoral immunity, meaning the B cells are activated to functionally active plasma cells with cartwheel nucleus and with guns shooting antibodies against these S proteins of COVID. Next is the other arm, CD8 positive T helper, one cells will be activated and they will activate the cellular immunity like macrophages and these macrophages will start killing the cells by contact killing. Then they also secrete some cytokines and will stimulate lots of neutrophils. This neutrophils entry and into the lungs starting to cause lung injury resulting in ARDS. This is in brief of what and all is happening in COVID. Next question is, if you are provided with a complete blood count of a patient, will you be able to tell whether he has COVID or not? Yes, there is a possibility. Just see the absolute lymphocyte count of that patient. Lymphopenia is common in 90% of the patients with COVID. Why does it happen? ACE2 receptor is expressed on the surface of lymphocytes that will enhance uptake of COVID virus entry and this will deplete the lymphocytes. And also due to bone marrow suppression in COVID causing lymphopenia. So the absolute lymphocyte count is normally 1800 to 7700. In COVID, it can decrease less than 1500. And if it is keep on decreasing like less than 1000, then means it is one of the severity indicators and it should be followed up with other inflammatory markers to predict the prognosis. No, both arms of immunity affected so both CD4 as well as CD8 T cells both reduce. Next is eosinophils. If they decrease, it also goes towards poor prognosis. Next is only cell increased in COVID is neutrophils. If as the severity keep on increasing, as I told, neutrophils will be the key player in ARDS. So the higher the neutrophils with subsequent decrease in lymphocytes will be a severity predictor, which is the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, NLR. Okay. So the normal uh, mild COVID may, it is it will be less than 3.2 and 3.2 to 5.5 in moderate elevation. And if it is more than 5.5, it is severe elevation. And also should know it is an independent risk factor for mortality. 
So it should also be combined with other markers. Next is platelets in COVID. Usually there will be a mild thrombocytopenia. First is bone marrow suppression, myocardial blast are suppressed. Production is decreased. Next is in COVID, there will be lots of thrombi getting formed here and there. In these thrombi, platelets are consumed. And also, this antibodies which are formed in COVID not only attack the co uh, S protein of coronavirus, also they attack a minor subset of platelets. This contributes to COVID induced immune thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP. Okay, it's very rare, but it's a complication. Next is rarely thrombocytosis can happen. Next common question which we get is how to identify when a patient will be progressing into cytokine storm or ARDS. So whenever severe inflammation happens in COVID, this will stimulate the liver to produce the acute phase reactants, which are the ferritin, fibrinogen, as well as C-reactive protein. And also the inflammatory cells will secrete lots of cytokines, mainly the interleukin-6, which also stimulates the liver to produce more and more acute phase reactants. So all are the inflammatory markers. So next is the best inflammatory marker, which is the CRP. C-reactive protein is produced from the liver, as we know. Next is its function is it has the ability to bind to phospholipids. So wherever damaged cells are there, it will go and bind there. It will facilitate clearance of those uh, damaged cells. As well as bacteria is there, they are phospholipids. It will go and bind. It will facilitate the clearance. Next, its TF is only one day. Then its levels, if you see, normal, we can keep it less than three or less than 10. You can keep it as normal. Then 10 to 40 mild elevation, 40 to 125 moderate elevation, more than 125, it is severe elevation. So how does it differ from ESR? See, whenever inflammation starts, ESR will be a marker which will be rising very slowly and it will be plateauing and it will be having a late fall. But with respect to CRP, it will detect the inflammation early then it will co coincide along with the inflammation and fall along with the inflammation. So that is the best marker. And since its TF is only one day, it also offers the advantage to follow up. Like how the patient is responding to a treatment in two, three days you can follow and prognosticate accordingly. Most importantly, always correlate clinically with the patient. If his saturation is fine, if a six minute walk test is fine, then don't intervene much. Don't just rely on lab values alone. Okay. Yeah. Next is the important test, which is D-dimer. In COVID, most endothelial injury happens leading to release of this tissue plasminogen activator. This plasmin will just go and try to find wherever clots are there. In clots, there will be some cross-linked fibrin strands as well as some loosely fibrin strands. This cross-linked fibrin strands will be cut by the plasmin into D-dimer and some loosely circulating fibrin will be converted into fibrin degradation products, FDP. Okay, so both these levels are elevated in COVID, which means lots of blood clots are getting formed in COVID. Next is, what is the normal levels? Always it is less than 500 nanogram per ml or less than 0.5 if you take it in milligram. Next is, if age is above 50, age into 10 you should do because if the patient is 90 years 90 to 10 900 till 900 is normal only so you shouldn't get worried for that next is where are this uh, d dimer test important it has high negative predictive value meaning if d dimer is less than 500 or 0.5 then means 
completely we are sure that there is no thrombus inside your body okay. what if it becomes positive then means it is not always due to covid there are multiple reasons for it one is pregnancy inflammatory states like rheumatoid arthritis connective tissue disorders and any malignancies all these can elevate the t dimer and it may be falsely negative meaning if the sample is taken too early on the first day itself or if the patient is already on anticoagulants then it may be false negative next is this covid associated coagulopathy this tendency of covid to form clots here and there is this uh, term so d dimer is elevated and what about aptt since all the coagulation factors are utilized in clot formation aptt will be increased pt will be increased or will be normal also why because factor 8 is an acute phase reactant that will increase and it might normalize the pt so all obviously inr ratio will also become normalized so you can't be falsely misleading with pt inr values it's always best to do aptt and d dimer values next is fibrinogen fibrinogen will be elevated because it is also a acute phase reactant so if d dimer is a increased first differential will be thinking of disseminated intravascular coagulation dic how to differentiate whether it's due to covid or whether it's due to some sepsis going on in covid so in both d dimer value will be elevated aptt elevated pt might also be elevated only factor differentiating in both is serum fibrinogen levels if it is raised it is due to covid if it is falling then it is due to dic next is one interesting marker see whenever rbc's lies lots of iron is released into the body this free iron is heavily toxic because as a part of fenton's reaction if you study it will form lots of free radicals and damages the cell membrane of every organ and also it is a food for many bacteria as well as viruses so our body has some mechanisms to prevent the circulation of free iron in uh, blood what are the mechanisms first is protein called haptoglobin which will bind the free iron and prevent its circulation next is our macrophages these macrophages will engulf the free iron and they will convert it into a storable form of iron which is known as ferritin whenever inflammation happens or bacterial or any viral infection happens our main aim is to prevent the iron free iron to go into these virus and bacteria because these are the food for bacteria and virus so what our body does is liver produces a protein called hepcidin it inhibits iron absorption from the gut then it produces ferritin excess ferritin and also our macrophages come into the picture and it will engulf all the iron and store it as ferritin thus ferritin levels mount up during inflammation so with this what take home message can i do first is never ever give iron tablets when a patient is having active infection or inflammation next is this is not specific to any kind of thing like any inflammation can elevate ferritin levels any viral infection or superimposed bacterial infection anything can elevate ferritin levels so don't rely only on ferritin covid yeah next is what are the normal values in males it is 30 to 300 and females 20 to 200 and if it is elevated like 500 800 more than 800 means it is severe elevations yeah next is the cytokine interleukin 6 it is produced in abundance in covid but you should know one important thing its t half is just 10 minutes that means if you take the blood sample and if you keep it for long time before processing all the cells 
will leak this interleukin 6 into the serum sample and you will get some erroneously high values in this covid we got lots of patients with only interleukin 6 elevated remaining all the other markers are exactly normal this is nothing but this is the main reason for it so don't get panicked only by interleukin 6 levels and also for mild patients there is no need to do interleukin 6 itself only for moderate and severe patients you can try doing but process it fast that is the most important thing and always correlate with other clinical markers that's it friends hope it's clear for you for why the investigations we are doing in covid and how to correlate them clinically and when to do these investigations is like in mild cases you can delay at least till some symptoms come out and it's always better to do at fourth to seventh day and it always better to follow up on the second week of the illness which is the main designing factor in case of mild covid patients whether they will progress into moderate and severe or they will resolve okay. if any help you are always feel free to contact us in our whatsapp as well as telegram groups thank you